I don't believe they are. I don't know how many doctors there are out there, for example. I don't really know how many doctors graduate every year from universities. But there might be a program in place somewhere to encourage more people to become doctors. And do we really need doctor doctors? Can we not use uh, medical professions? Can we not use emergency workers to take place as doctors if there is small accidents? You know, you, you see your doctor about everything, but do you have to see your local doctor about everything? The cuts and scrapes and scratches and stitches, can they not be done by other people other than your family physician? So we could fill a lot of spots if they didn't have to be doctors. Well, I'm pretty sure there was something in the budget that uh, there was uh, a tax break for uh, doctors that would go to rural parts of Prince Edward Island. He certainly, uh, the Prime Minister certainly identified that as a, a situation, but we also have brought record uh, amounts of funding to the province, and it's the province's uh, responsibility for health care in every province. No. And, and that is why I pushed, and the government has decided, or the Liberal Party has decided that we would provide assistance to doctors and nurses who train and agree to go to remote areas or rural areas across this country. And of course, a large part of Cardigan would fall in that line. What we need is doctors and nurses across eastern Prince Edward Island. And as we all know, in this area, they're scarce. I want to see more doctors. I've met with doctors, I've met with student doctors, and what they want is basically what we have uh, issued in our platform, but probably even more of that, to make sure that they're able to uh, practice where they came from, and that would be in Eastern Prince Edward Island. No. Why do you think that? Well, the amount of money for equalization keeps decreasing each time a new agreement is negotiated and uh, the equalization money is necessary to provide a reasonable level of, of services, be it health care or whatever. We're very concerned about the seismic testing in the Gulf. Uh, the fisheries habitat is so important and if, if, if they're allowed to fish here, and destroy the lobster fishery, it would be a devastating effect to the economy of eastern Prince Edward Island, and of course for all the fishery around Prince Edward Island. So that's something that, yes, we are very concerned about and we'll be stating that many, many times. No. Why do you think that? Well, we don't know for sure whether it'll harm, harm the uh, fish stock or not. Um, well, our, our fishermen have gone through a number of, of difficult years in the, in the last two or three years and certainly I would uh, want to uh, stress that they would have uh, full consultation and uh, before anything is even uh, considered. It's that the fishermen are consulted and they have to play a major part in it. I, I certainly want, wouldn't want to see anything to, that would impact their livelihoods. No, they shouldn't have any seismic testing at all in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. If you start seismic testing now, if you were to find something, they want to drill for oil, make a mess, and if we have every memory at all, think of the Gulf of Mexico. Just think it as the Gulf of St. Lawrence, covered with oil, the island has been covered with oil. It just is the stupidest idea I've ever heard of my entire life. See what's been done somewhere else, don't do it here. Uh, the first thing I've done today is uh, I bought a, um, a steer at the Easter Beef Sale from uh, Brendan Crane in, in Lauren Valley. And uh, I've always been a big supporter of agriculture in rural Prince Edward Island. And I'll uh, work with the farmers and, and consult with them to see what ways we can make them grow and prosper. Uh, farmers to stay on the land farming. Very, very tough question. Uh, I, I would have to think that the amount of uh, pesticides that the farmers have to buy to create the perfect product for people at the other end. When I eat a potato, it doesn't have to be a perfect potato. It just has to be a darn nice taste of potato. So if you spend a lot of your money trying to create the potato, the chance of you making a profit are even harder to make a profit. So I think if the people at the other end reduce the restrictions on the perfect product, it costs less to create the perfect product, the farmers make more money at the top end, farmers can stay on their property and maybe introduce different products rather than just 
potatoes to Prince Edward Island. You can do corn, soya bean. I'm not too sure of other things you can do, but there must be other alternatives if we're out there looking. I think that what you're talking about, uh, talking about is something that would would be the direct responsibility of uh, of the provincial government, and uh, there are many ways uh, to do that in, in in rural communities, for instance. Uh, um, developing uh, agricultural operations based on uh, uh, environmental sustainability, uh, allowing people to get away from industrial farming and uh, um, get into the whole idea of uh, growing and producing agricultural products in a sustainable way. And uh, at the same time, uh, Preserving, preserving our our uh, land, um, and that's one one way to do it in rural, rural communities. Well, the problem for a long time has been that the food and the food industry, food in this country, has not been a priority. The problem is everybody else gets the cut out of the food except the farmer. When you look at the price that the farmer received for a bag of potatoes, and then you you look at the price when it's retail, there's just too big a difference. What we have to remember and what government has to remember, there has to be proper programs in place. Being a farmer all my life, I well understand that it needs to be programs in place to make sure that the farmer receives a fair return for their product. And if they do not, they cannot stay in business. Again, it would be these sorts of thing, things that I've been talking about that would keep keep you here because it's all about about uh, job opportunities, employment opportunities, where the, where people can work at what they choose and make a good living at it, um, and uh, using PEI as a center for for developing alternate energy, uh, changing our agricultural practices. Uh, to make them more sustainable, and the same is true of fisheries. I think that that would create more employment and occupational opportunities for young people. That's what would keep them here. That's what the la it's a lack that of that that's driving them away. Well, it's a big job, and what you have to do is create equal opportunity. What I tried to do when I when we were in government is bring some industry and some jobs to Eastern Prince Edward Island, like the Addiction Center and, and right across Royalty Hardwoods and a number of uh, businesses in this area and across and uh, across Eastern Prince Edward Island. I think the, the food park in Surrey was another very important initiative that I was pleased to be able to bring. But another thing that you have to be able to do, we look in the fishery, if you the mid-shore saners getting thousands of tons of, uh, of, of extra herring. When the herring is the food fish for the, all the fish in the sea, it looks to me like uh, that the present government, the Harper government, is not very concerned about the fishery in Atlantic Canada. This is a very big issue. We have to have, well they all can't work in factories, so we can't just suddenly create some place for people to work. If they're educated in the right fields, we should look to see if we can create a job for the education that they're taught in school. So if, if the school system is pumping out students that we don't have jobs for, then we can't keep them. So you have to create the school system to have jobs at the end of the day that they could stay and we could have jobs. So it's a two-fold thing. You can't have a job if we don't have the people for it. You can't create or train our young people for a job that's not here. So if you want them to be here, you must send them to school with the training for a job we could put here. You just can't say just because you graduated from the university, we should have a job for you. But what did you graduate in? And that's what we have to, it's two, it's two part questions. They have to graduate, we have to create something for them to do. You, you just can't build a factory and say, here, all the young people from Cardigan should work in this factory. That's, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, when I was Minister of Economic Development, I was uh, a strong advocate for bringing uh, companies and, and new jobs, and new technology to uh, this part of the province. I, I 
brought the Welding School and Technology Center to uh, Georgetown to allow our youth to have the opportunity to get trades and, and uh, uh, apply themselves afterwards and make a contribution to our economy. I brought companies like CGI to Stratford that were full-time paying jobs and, and uh, it's all about new technology and I would uh, continue on that path. I think the, the overall pressing issue for me is to make sure that the people in Cardigan have a better standard of living. That's my job, to make sure that we have equal opportunity and they can, you can live here as well as you can in any other place across the country. We have everything. We've got highway schools, churches, all the infrastructure. What we need is employment. What we need is the people being able to live here and have a proper standard. That's what I've been striving to do and will continue to strive to do. Our economy and jobs for Islanders is, is the most um, important issue out there today. Is, is uh, People are telling me that they want to see, first of all, a strong and stable uh, majority government in Ottawa, and they also want uh, a paycheck every Friday, and, and uh, I will work uh, with them to uh, uh, find jobs and attract uh, new companies here and also expand the ones we have. I think the issue of, uh, of uh, making PEI a, a better place to live with more, more uh, uh, employment, uh, employment and self-employment opportunities for people to keep our youth here cer certainly is important and uh, uh, the federal government has to, to, to uh, take uh, a more active role in that, be it through equalization or, uh, or through uh, um, direct as assistance. Um, I think that what we also want to do is that in the provision of public services that eventually PEI become self-supporting and reduce the 44% reliance on uh, federal government transfers. Um, if we have a, a thriving economy here, here, that will happen. And I think, think it would be a good thing. Uh, there's no reason why we can't step, take steps towards becoming a have province. I think tourism is what we lack in, the, in Cardigan. Um, I know, for example, when the cruise ships go into Charlottetown, I'm here at the mall, I visit other stores in, in Montague, there's nobody here. I've gone to Surrey, East Point, Georgetown, and I asked the merchants there, where are all these people from these cruise ships that are in Charlottetown that bring millions and millions of dollars to the island? They go, Les, who are you kidding? There's nobody here from those cruise ships. They never crossed the Hillsborough Bridge to see us. I think the only place is a Montague, I think it's the SEAL tour, that they pay to have people come out and take their SEAL tour. Other than that, there's nothing that anybody comes to when those cruise ships go into Charlottetown. So we should have our own cruise ships come into Georgetown, Surrey, bring the tourist attractions here to our side. So tourism is clean money. There's no pollution to tourism, there's no industry to tourism, there's not smokestacks going to tourism. It's pretty much a clean industry. And we don't have that in Cardigan Riding. We have the stores. Montague's open every day of the year. Surrey's open every day of the year. Tourists could come from early spring to late fall. We just need stuff for them to do, stuff that entice them to come to the Cardigan riding to stay and spend their good money. That's what we need.